Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Sometimes if you want to make a good habit, you need to have reminders. One of my daughters, her name is Sandra. She's our youngest daughter. She's not just mine. She's Dave's too. I act like these are all my kids. <laughs> you know me, the choleric personality. It's mine. Everything's mine. So she, her love language, how many of you know what a love language is? That means it's, it's the way that people speak to you that make you feel loved. So uh, and different peoples are different. Some people, you give them a gift, they feel love. Some people, you give them a compliment, and they feel love. Well, we normally try to give people what we need, but most of the time, it's not what they need. So they feel like we're not giving them anything, and we feel like we're trying so hard to give them everything, and they're never satisfied no matter what we give them, but they don't need what you need. You need to take the time to find out what they need and give that to them, and that is real love. And a lot of times, what they need you to give them is not something that's going to come to you naturally. So that means you're going to have to farm a new habit. So my daughter Lee needs a lot of encouragement because her love language are words of encouragement. Her husband, however, doesn't speak her language. <laughs> How many of you feel like you're married to someone who does not speak your language? Okay. So... After them having several heated conversations and several tearful bouts, he got smart. He started putting reminders on his phone and pop-up messages in his computer. Encourage Sandra today. <laughs> now, my two top love languages are gifts of service, I mean acts of service, Man, if you want to get on my good side, just do something for me that needs to be done. Just get it off of me so I don't have to mess with it. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to have to do it. I just want to pray and study and write and preach and teach. That's what I want to do. That's my passion. So anybody that does any of the rest of the stuff, they just get on my good side. The second thing is gifts. So now, Dave, just a word of advice. Put a reminder in your phone. And, and every day, just say, honey, what can I do for you today? What do you need done that I could do for you today? And then run out and get me a gift, and you'll be in good shape. <laughs> how many of you wish that, that, how many of you ladies wish that the person you're married to would put reminders on their phone? You know, I thought, I was proud of him for doing that. Oh, get out of here. I ask you what your love language is, and you don't even know, let alone anybody else. You ask him, what would you like? Uh, <laughs> give him a compliment. He's, like, He's so secure. I'm still trying to figure out what it is. I do think it's encouragement. So let's all encourage Dave. Come on, give Dave a big hand. But see, if you want to make good habits, don't be bashful. I mean, write notes all over your house if you have to. Put notes all over your house. Go out and get a sign painted if you have to. Do warfare. If you think, well, I try to remember, but I just can't. Well, then don't, don't have a room in your house where you don't have a note that reminds you to do the right thing, and then pretty soon you'll be able to start taking some of those down. It's just all part of renewing your mind. Teresa had a bad habit of hitting the snooze button on her alarm too many times, and she was consistently late for work. She had to break this habit or she was likely to lose her job. <laughs> so this is what she did. She moved the alarm clock across the room, which would force her to get out of bed to go turn it off. Because she had such a problem with this, she went the extra mile and she, the minute she got out of bed, she would pull the sheet up and pull the covers up. So if she turned it off and tried to go back to bed, the bed being made up would remind her to stay out of it. Teresa did not want to lose her job. Don't tell me that you can't get where you're going on time and get out of bed on time if you get violent with your enemies. 
Come on. I'm saying you need to get violent with your enemies. Don't show them any mercy. Say, that's it. You're out of here. Rhonda's husband drank several glasses of whole milk a day. She got very concerned because he had a little more weight on him than she wanted him to have. And she knew his cholesterol intake was too much. And he was getting older now. So she started adding a little bit of skim milk to the carton and pouring out a little bit of the whole milk. And she did this over a period of time, a couple months, two, three months. All of a sudden, he was drinking all skim milk. She tried to give him a glass of whole milk, and he didn't like it. I'm trying to tell you that your body only has the ability to love what you let it get used to. Amen? All right, I'm preaching better than you're acting, but that's all right. All right, now. Okay, you say, I do, I, I do want to make some good habits, and there are some bad habits I'd like to, to break, and so I'm hearing you to break those bad habits. I've got to make good habits, so when shall I start? <laughs> well, how about the first of the year? <laughs> No, 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 no. Now is the time of salvation. <laughs> now is the time. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is not yesterday or tomorrow. Right now, we believe that God can deliver us. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart as they did in the rebellion. Today, if God is speaking to you through what I'm saying, then I would not even say I'm going to wait till next week. I'm going to wait till Monday. I'm going to wait till after the holidays. You know, if there's something you're addicted to and you brought it with you, you're more than welcome to walk up here and put it on this altar before you leave tonight. I'd love to see this place just filled with all kinds of stuff. And I tell you, we've done it before and had some interesting stuff. I mean, I, I've had be people come into the meeting with, with their booze, or certainly cigarettes, their drug paraphernalia, all kinds of stuff. And there's no better time than to do it now. However, I do want to say this. Don't do it until you count the cost. There's no point in doing it emotionally. Yes, this is so good. Praise God. I'm going to have to Woo! I love this choice. Yes, throwing my stuff on the altar. Amen. <laughs> okay, let's just say that, um, that you decide that you want to, you're, you're really going to get your body in shape and you're going you're gonna to start eating healthy and you're going to lose weight and you're going to, you know, break the habit of doing bad things. Well, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to be hungry for a while. And your flesh is going to have a fit. It's going to go. I never get to have anything. I had somebody say the other day, I wish God would have made just one food that I like that had no calories in it. <laughs> just one free food, God, please. Anything that we, all we could eat and not, not celery either or lettuce. Something good. All right. What happens if you decide that you're going to quit smoking? Now, apart from getting a miracle from God, which some people do, but I didn't, so I can only tell you my experience. First of all, you're going to have nicotine withdrawal. And it won't be horrible. You'll survive it. Every day it gets easier, but the first few days, you'll have cigarettes on your mind all day long. And your, your flesh is going to say, I can't stand it. I can't do it. I can't do this. I'm a nervous wreck. I want to eat everything I can get my hands on. <laughs> can't do it, can't do it. Make it through one day, go to the next day. It may not even get too much easier the second day, but I can tell you by the end of the first week, it's going to be getting easier. Now, if you make it through 30 days, I can tell you it's probably not going to bother you at all. The only thing that will happen is maybe for even two or three years, when you get under a pressure situation, you may find yourself subconsciously looking for a cigarette. 
I did, because that's just what you're used to doing. Okay, now what will be the benefits if you say we're to quit smoking? And let me tell you, I'm not picking on smoking because I think that's, I mean, gossip is just as bad. So I'm not, you know. Well, the benefits, you're going to save money. You know, when I started smoking as a kid, cigarettes were 25 cents a pack. Well, that's long since gone away. I have no idea what they are, but I know they're not 25 cents a pack. You won't smell like smoke. <laughs> and I don't want to get myself in trouble to hurt anybody's feelings, but I'll tell you what. When we smoke, we don't know how it smells. But when you don't, I mean, I'm just saying, when you don't. <laughs> hey, I love you. Mm, mm, mm. I could probably really get myself in trouble, so I just might as well go ahead and say, I don't know the smoking will keep you out of heaven. I think people do a lot worse things. The Bible says a whole lot about overeating, doesn't say nothing about smoking. <laughs> but if you do quit, you won't have to be afraid of getting lung cancer. That'd be a cool benefit. Yeah. My father smoked three packs of cigarettes a day all of his life, and he had terrible lung problems. And so I smoked for a lot of years. I haven't smoked now for like 35, 36 years. And it was worth it. It's worth it not to do it. Now, if you, you know, if you don't want to quit, then don't quit. That's between you and God. God was convicting me to quit. And, you know, when I started teaching, I sat and taught in short shorts and smoked cigarettes the whole time I was teaching. But that might not work here tonight. So, you know, I wanted to kind of move on with God. And I had to lay down a few things that wouldn't have been just really cool with most people. So. Amen. Oh, and by the way, I was anointed when I did it, too. <laughs> see, God doesn't just see where you're at. He sees where you're going to be. So, so what happens? How many of you know you should be working out? <laughs> okay. Well, I started six years ago. I've not having done it all my life. And I can promise you that I thought I was going to die. Actually, <laughs> I went to the gym and this trainer, I said, you're going to give me a program that I'm going to go home and do it. Well, that didn't work. I had to get the trainer all the time because I needed help. But anyway, I didn't know that they gave me one program for one day and then one, a different program for the next day. So, you know, there's supposed to be like 45-minute workout sessions. Well, I didn't know. I thought I had to do it all every day. <laughs> so I went home with all this stuff. I mean... I was 64 when I started. I'd never worked out in my life. And I'm exercising an hour and a half a day. I had to fall on the toilet and pray to be able to get off. I mean, I would just like, I would go. go. Oh. 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 I mean, it was bad. I mean, I told my chiropractor, because the gym is where the chiropractor's at, I said, I feel sick. He said, oh, yeah, you might feel that way for a while. <laughs> so I can tell you what, if you've never done it, you're going to be sore. It's going to take time. It may cost you a little money if you're going to join a gym. If you want to get a trainer, it's even going to cost more money. But let's talk about the benefits. We always think about what's it going to cost. That's the first thing we always ask. Well, how much does it cost? How much does it cost? What does it cost? Well, talk about the benefits. You're going to get smaller. Your current clothes will get too big. You're going to get tons of compliments. You'll have more energy. You'll be healthier. You'll live longer. And everybody will be jealous of your discipline and the way you look. I'll be honest, can I? Well, I'm honest anyway, so I don't need to get permission, you know. <laughs> it makes me feel good when people say, You look great for your age. You do, you well, do. but now listen. <laughs> but I, did, I don't get it wishing. Remember? 
<laughs> oh my God. I mean, when I started working out, I didn't, I guess I didn't, I mean, I guess I had the ability to have muscle, but I didn't have any that was showing. And <laughs> one day I was sitting and I rubbed the back of my leg and I felt this knot and I thought I had a tumor. I did. I thought, oh my gosh. I felt the other leg just, and I thought, ooh, there's one there too. <laughs> and then I thought, I have muscle! I got on the phone, I said, I have a muscle! I was so excited. So anyway, I'm sure you've had enough of eating and exercise. Let's, how about some quotes on procrastination? You don't want to put it off, it's now. Here you go. Procrastination is like a credit card. It's a lot of fun until you get the bill. That was said by Christopher Parker. I want to give all these people credit because I got them off the internet. Ninyad McLaughlin, there are so many things we wish we had done yesterday and so few that we feel like doing today. <laughs> if you have goals and procrastination, you have nothing. <laughs> if you have goals and you take action, you'll have anything you want. Thomas Villiard. Procrastination is the kidnapper of souls and the recruiting officer for hell. Edward Irving. Procrastination is the seed of self-destruction, Matthew Burton. When there's a hill to climb, don't think that waiting will make it any smaller. <laughs> and here's my very favorite, and the author's unknown, so I don't know, maybe we could just start saying Joyce said. <laughs> Procrastination is suicide on the installment plan. <laughs> you didn't like that. Well, I like it. Couple of examples. And I am going to go a few minutes over my hour tonight. But thankfully, we don't fall off the clock now. I had back pain for years and years and years. Wouldn't go to the doctor, wouldn't go to the doctor, wouldn't go to the doctor. Yeah, I'll be all right. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be. One morning, got up and couldn't walk. So I had to go to the chiropractor two and three times a week for a year and three months. What kind of warnings are you getting that you're ignoring? You say, what do you mean? Man, this shoulder of mine's been hurting for the last two years. I don't know what's wrong. Well, why don't you go find out? <laughs> well, I don't have a doctor. Well, get one. <laughs> Stop being passive and start being aggressive and taking care of things. I had a pain in my shoulder blade right here for 20 years. 20 years. And I could not tell you how many times I got my back adjusted for that pain in my shoulder because it was so bad. After two months of working out, that pain completely went away. I never had any problems with it after that. And now if I do something, which I did something recently and kind of irritated it, now I know what to do to get it to feel better on my own because I know the right exercises to do for it. You know what? You really save a lot of time when you do the right thing first instead of the wrong thing. Okay, I can see you didn't go too well with that. Let's try the dentist. <laughs> a dentist once said this to me, and he had every right to say it. He said, we really need you to come in for your regular checkups and your regular cleaning so you stop needing emergency appointments <laughs> because you have a toothache. He reminded me that the only time he saw me was when I had an emergency. He then went on to tell me that my emergency put stress on his schedule <laughs> that was already full and that I was not being fair to him. And that was true. I wouldn't go get the checkups. I wouldn't go get the cleaning. But then when I'd get a toothache, I'd call and I have an emergency. I'm, I'm going out of town. Can you get me in right away? I've got a really bad toothache. And I probably did that six times over a period of, you know, number of years. And he was right in telling me what he told me. Can I tell you that getting your teeth cleaned is less expensive and a lot less painful than a root canal? Okay, now, the one habit I told you that I would tell you about 
Now, I'm going to just lay a little foundation for you, and then we'll be talking about we working this into the rest of our habits. The first habit that we need to form before anything else can work right in our life. <clears throat> and boy, this one good habit will help undo so many bad habits is what I'm going to lovingly and reverently call the God habit. <laughs> I believe that spending time with God and being in the Word can definitely become a habit. I would absolutely feel totally and completely undone if I didn't get up now and spend the first part of my day with God. Now, I know you say, I, you know, I'm just not a morning person. Well, even if you're not a morning person, could you take five minutes just to get, just to let the devil know where you stand today? And if you can't do anything, just say, God, I love you. I need you. I appreciate everything that you do for me. I need your help today, help me. So then maybe you're gonna spend more time with God at lunch or you're better at night or whatever. But try to get your day started with God on your mind. Farm the God habit. Now listen, Luke 22, 39. And he went and, and he came out and went as was his habit to the Mount of Olives and the disciples also followed him. Now, Jesus did not go to the mountain because he was partial to mountain climbing. He went there to pray. Jesus went there when he needed to spend time with his father. And Jesus had a habit of spending time with his heavenly father. If it was a habit for him, who seemed to have all power and could do all things, then why would it not need to be a habit for us? And you see, because it was a habit for him, when it came time for his death and crucifixion, he knew right away where to go and what to do. He went to the garden and he got down and he prayed and his mind was in such great agony that as he continued to press in in prayer, the Bible says that he sweated great drops of blood, but he fought through your will be done, God, and not mine. And then angels came and ministered to him. And because he prayed through and knew where to go habitually when he was in trouble. We are all here today, saved, born again, and on our way to heaven. And let me tell you something. If you will form the God habit, and you will spend time with God, and you'll learn the Word, and you'll begin to be led by the Holy Spirit, you have no idea how many people you will be able to positively affect over the rest of your lifetime, and how many people may be in heaven because you were wise enough to form good habits. Now, how many of you know if you form this God habit, it's going to break automatically, it's going to drive a lot of other bad habits out of your life? That's why I really don't intend, I'm not going to deal with every bad habit that I can think of. There's a couple that I'm going to mention, but by and large, we are going to talk about making good habits. I think if we stay on the good stuff, the bad stuff just won't have any room in our life. And I'm telling you again, Enoch, the Bible says, Enoch walked habitually with God, and he was not, for God took him. Here's a man who had such good habits that the world couldn't even hold him anymore. It didn't even have a place for him because he walked habitually with God. Every great man and woman that you read about in the Bible, all of our heroes of faith, they had the God habit. David sought God with his whole heart. I will seek you, God, with my whole heart. Early in the morning will I seek you. I meditate on your word all throughout the night. I'll just simply tell you, if you won't spend time with God, you say, well, I go to church. That is not what I'm talking about. That is not what I'm talking about. What you hear in church, what you hear on CDs, what you read in books, they're pieces. And you need them. But you got to take them all to God and ask Him to put them together in your life and make them work for you. <laughs> Amen. I'm encouraging you to focus on the good thing that you want to do and stop big S-T-O-P focusing on the bad thing you don't want to do. 
Bible says in Romans 12, 21, don't let yourself be overcome by evil, but overcome and master evil with good. So that means that we can overcome bad habits by focusing on making good habits. But I know that I know that I know that the Word of God is true and that He changes lives and He gives you a life worth living. Misschien ken je Joyce Meyer van haar boeken of van haar programma Enjoying Everyday Life. Maar wist je dat Joyce Meyer Ministries ook overal ter wereld concrete humanitaire hulp biedt door middel van voedselverstrekking, ziekenhuizen, noodhulp bij rampen, het bevrijden van slachtoffers van mensenhandel en nog veel meer? Deze christelijke hulporganisatie heet Hand of Hope en draait volledig op giften. We do humanitarian works all over the world. You know, here we are in Haiti. I'm here in Thailand, Thessaloniki, Greece, in the back bush of Africa, on the Mekong River, in the city of Phnom Penh. Human trafficking, today's term for modern slavery. We've been working in different parts of the world and providing a a place for women to come out of that lifestyle and be restored. It, it, there's no limit here. This is this is ran by God. He changes lives in Project Hope. You can change, you can get healing, you can survive. This little girl at 10 years old escaped on her own from sex trafficking. She lives on the streets. She was rounded up by vans that travel around and steal these children. They were actually weighing the little girls so that they could ship them out of the country. And she was able to sneak away and escape. She ran to the tent that you see behind me where we feed the children and ask for safety. So we're able to feed Farisua here every day. We're able to grant her just a little bit of safety and to help her in any way that we can to tell her about Christ and just to love on her a whole bunch because she's an awesome little girl. Over Jezus vertellen en mensen laten zien dat God van ze houdt. Ja, de vele noden op de wereld gaan een mens te boven. En misschien vraag je je zelfs af of je er überhaupt wel iets aan kunt doen. Maar dat kan dus wel degelijk. Hand of Hope, de christelijke hulporganisatie van Joyce Meyer Ministries, is daar het bewijs van. Alles in één keer oplossen gaat niet. Maar wij bieden mensen één voor één de helpende hand.